It's time to pick a side. The border war is on the air with BP and Ten. All right, true believers, welcome into episode 95 of the Border War. First of all, we'd like to apologize about last week. Hey, no we had to some, apologize. We had man. some flu and some home repair issues. and Life happens. All man. kinds of stuff. Happens. Life happens. But uh, we're back. We are back better than ever. Uh, and lo and behold, the Super Bowl is now over. But we never football. really got a chance to talk about it even starting, but, no. but now it's over. No. Football season is not, though. We'll get into that toward the end of the... Uh, well, the NFL these so. days would like you to believe that the season lasts all year long anyway. So um, we will be talking, obviously, about our thoughts about the Super Bowl, although, honestly, not a lot to talk about there. Uh, 2019 power rankings are out, so that, that actually, we know who's up top, but... Toward the middle, maybe it gets a little more interesting. We'll go through that. and Then back into the box we go. We will be talking about the Redskins, the Cowboys, and the Panthers, what those guys are going to be doing this offseason, or rather uh, what they should be doing. None of them will probably do the things they should do. but well, Maybe they listen to the show. We know, we know Scott McLuhan is <clears throat> a follower on Twitter. No longer affiliated with the Redskins, unfortunately. But my point is that there are NFL executives who listen to the show. And Rob Gronkowski's brother listens to the show. How okay. about that? Yeah. How about that? He's waiting on us to hawk his energy drink, but that's okay. Hey. That's okay. We'll I, hawk anything. I listen, we'll hawk anything, man. You just give us a call. You let us know. We are definitely for sale. Absolutely. So, BG, so you mentioned it. The Super Bowl was in the books. Uh, obviously, we weren't here last week to give our expert analysis uh, on what we expected to happen. Uh, before we get into it, of course, the NFL picks list is over. I did pick the Patriots to win. That's 100 wins on the season. Another championship in the picks list for the Tan Man. And aside from that, aside from watching the game, knowing uh, that deep down... In your soul, you were once again defeated by the Tan Man. What are your thoughts just off the cuff? Because, like I said, you know, this game is now, what, three or four days old? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been broken down. But what, you, what was your take on the Super Bowl? Um, I kept trying to talk myself into me being a big football fan, talking myself into feeling entertained. Uh, and I, it's just time for me to say I was not. Um. Maybe it makes me sound like I don't know as much about football as I, blah, blah, blah. I thought it was boring. I thought it was a really boring game. I thought the second half was better. Um, But I didn't feel like it was just defenses doing a great job. I felt like it was two offenses that were just not playing well in the first half. I I don't know about you. Let me just throw this out there. I said this to my wife when we were watching the game. Mm -hmm. I thought that Tom Brady looked a little ill. His eyes seemed kind of dark. Mm-hmm. And he seemed a little paler than normal. It's called age, man. Well, now I was just wondering, though, in the first now, half, Father he looked Time. a little feverish. I thought maybe he had the flu or something. Um, no, but it just, look, the Rams seemed completely unprepared to be there. They, they and, and, you know, I think I tweeted this week, like, I don't know if you watched the end of the game, but... Tracy Wolfson trying to interview. Oh, my goodness. That was the most exciting part of the night for me. I thought maybe she was going to die. I didn't know. What about the Tom Brady, Robert Kraft embrace and kiss? Did you see that picture? I, yeah. Kind of weird. Kind of weird. Kind of weird. But, I, I mean, it's not surprising to me that all those guys are weird. A lot of successful people are. You, you know, I, I was, I, I'm not going to say I wasn't. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to be that guy back. Like, oh, this was boring. I, no, I'm not angry about it. I'm just telling you I'm not going to lie and say I thought it was a great game. No, I don't think it was a great game. Because there are was, people doing that. No, I, I think that those are people trying to push you know, push something to try and seem like they're more sophisticated than that. Look, man, I, I'm all for a defensive game. I kind of I kind of expected this <clears throat> after you know, what we saw New England do to Kansas City. There wasn't an offense – anywhere in the league over the season more explosive and entertaining than the Chiefs offense. And for the better part of three quarters, the New England defense in the AFC title game really held them in check. I didn't really expect a high-scoring game. I expected something. I, I think I tweeted out 30-20, to 20, but I, in my gut I really kind of felt something more like 24-13. Right. 
a little bit of points, not a ton of points. But you go into halftime and, and this thing's three to three. three to, what was it? Three to three? It was, it three, 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 it was three, three nothing at halftime. Half time, that's right. Uh, but I, listen, hats off to those defenses. Uh, I think Sean McVay, uh, you know, the whole boy wonder routine. Uh, man, it was the, the teacher and the master last Sunday. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was Bill Belichick uh, going to work for the better part of, of four quarters the other night. Um, great game, no. Uh, entertaining game, no. But I will say that I thought the fourth quarter things picked up. It did. Now, and, the second uh, half was better. The ending, the ending was much better than the actual game. Let, let me say, too, that people act so surprised when a Super Bowl is different, let's just say, from what they were expecting. Uh-huh. We forget that the 50-something-odd Super Bowls we've had is an extremely small number of games. That's that's not three weeks of NFL season games, right? Hmm. There are games that go into halftime three to nothing every oh, week. Every week. And, and no one thinks anything about it, sort of like we were talking about with the pass interference a couple of weeks ago. That, that, that junk happens, man. There's bad misses on pass interference calls all the time. Um, they're just usually in games that no one cares about because the games don't matter. But um, are you, you know, good? Are you good with Edelman as the MVP? Ten catches, a buck forty, no touchdowns. But of course, you know, I, I, I definitely was. I was. I was okay with Brady not being the MVP because no, you he can't definitely get it Brady. wasn't. Um, I, I think you could make the case for Stephon Gilmore. I'm not saying that just because he was a Gamecock because because he shut Cooks down. I mean, Cooks did nothing all night. Cooks had eight catches for 120 yards. That's nothing, man. Nothing. That's nothing. <laughs> no, I, I agree with you. I think, it, look, in a game that's three to nothing at halftime, the final score is 13 to three, one of the lowest scoring Super Bowls in history. It's got to be a defensive guy. It, it, it's got to be a defensive guy. You got Gilmore, what do you have? He had a, several pass breakups, then he have a forced fumble. He had a forced fumble uh, and, had and, and an interception, which, yeah, of course, gotta, had, I loved his comment on that. I don't know how many interviews with Gilmore you've ever watched, but he's the last guy on earth to toot his own horn, and they're trying so hard. And they were like, well, what, tell us about that that play. And he goes, well, man, you know, everybody in the league could have picked that ball off. He's like, I just couldn't true. believe he threw it. <laughs> and, I mean, true. And, 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 you know, and I it just, just kind of floated up there. Yeah. I, I, you know, and the only mistake was, of course, that the receiver really didn't. I don't see, think he really ever spotted the ball until it was too no, late. I, I, uh, New England did a great job of being in Jared Goff's face. All night long. And like confusing he him. He could, oh, yeah. He, 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 well, and not just him, but the play calling as well. I mean, yeah, it was it, it, it was golf, all over the place. Golf was never comfortable. How many times of all his of all his passes, how many times did, was he not able to step into a throw or to step up in the pocket because the guy's in his face, there's trash around his feet. I mean, and that interception was the same thing. He couldn't get anything under the ball. It just kind of floated up there. And Gilmore was standing down there. Uh, another, you or I probably could have caught that ball. Another crew I think you have to give a little nod to would be the Patriots' offensive line because um, the reason I picked the Rams was because I've seen Brady affected by pressure up the middle. And when he looks bad, that's why he looks bad. Yeah. And I really didn't think that there was anything they could do with Aaron Donald, but I was just wrong. Yeah, and look, they, the, uh, they, they handled him all night long. Brady got one pressure, one. Yeah. He never touched the ground. Uh, if he was playing poorly in the first half, it was coverages or I don't know, but it wasn't pressure. Brady was not under pressure really at all, and especially in the second half. I, yeah. You know, I, I, that, that Patriots offensive line, back in the day, that was normal to talk about them being great. That hasn't been um, – the mantra in, the, in going into this Super Bowl, but I, they, they impressed the hell out of me. And uh, both of these defenses really, you know, New England, is, well, it seems like the last few years, their defense has gotten a, gotten a rap of not being very good. Right. Uh, even through early on this year. Uh, I thought the Rams' defense, uh, aside from, from Aaron Donald, uh, like you said, uh, not taking over the ball game. Otherwise, I thought their defense was amazing. Uh, New England finally broke off a couple long runs late, but you could tell the Rams they were gas. They were they were done, man. They they had done it, everything that you know, they given everything that they had to give that night. So, I think uh, the game would have been more entertaining if you had really thought 
middle of the second quarter. Man, the Rams really might pull this off, and I never felt no. like that. Even when this thing is three to three, right? It felt it, it, man, it just felt like well been thirty yeah, to nothing. It man. felt like you were. It was already. You could see where it was going. And look, you know, you you, you just it is what it is. Tip your hat to them. Okay, so and here's the eight hundred pound gorilla in the room. What's up with Todd Gurley? What's going on there? I don't think he's healthy. You know, okay, see, because I think there's a lot of people. Um, that think that's not the issue. I, I, I don't. I don't think Gurley's healthy, man. Okay, so we just trot him out there some to keep him happy. Uh, I, 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 you have I, to I mean, admit I there's mean, an they, odd vibe about it. No I mean, one will come out and say that he's not healthy, I which think, is an odd thing I think to not say. Him, I think you put him out there, uh, if nothing else, just to to keep uh, keep New England honest. But yeah, I, I, I mean. <clears throat> You, I mean, you've seen him. I mean, what do you have? I know he broke off a couple runs. He had a couple of 13, 14 yard runs. But, I, you know, when 20, so yeah, I think I saw the stat the next morning, they ran 60 plays. 27 of those 60 plays went for zero or negative yardage. <laughs> so when your offense is doing nothing, man, I, I think you've got to, you've got to put Gurley out there but, to just keep him. Well, here's my question, though. But, why has it not come out now? That he's not healthy. Why are they still being really weird about it? I don't know. He's being weird about it. McVeigh's being weird about it. Everybody in the Rams organization is being really strange about it. No uh-huh. one's come out and been like, look, man, his knee's not good. You lay off of him. No one. It's really strange. I it just know. has an Maybe. odd feel to it. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe you know, he just got... He just got a big deal. I don't know. Maybe the Rams are secretly shopping him around the league. Well, I, I, I have already no already been articles on ESPN opinion pieces saying that the thing to do is to trade him. I mean, if it, you know, if you know that he's his, I mean, it's not the first time he's had trouble with it, knee. Right. Yeah, Obviously, it was, it was like yes. that. It was like that when you got him. Yeah. Uh, so no, I mean, if it's if it's an issue and you can cover that up and move him on to somebody else and make it somebody else's problem, then no, I wouldn't say anything about it either. Buyer beware. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess that is the most believable option. But I mean, it, I don't yeah, know if I've you heard, saw. I've, it. Heard, I've heard people go like, "Oh, is it mine? Yeah, is it his mind? Yeah, is it mentally?" Well, that's like, the thing. Ah. But you're leaving you're leaving it open to all that interpretation. There are people that are going to do that. And his post game interview was strange. He had a very odd demeanor. I mean, like he's he's just sort of like, "Yeah, I mean, I'm okay. I'm, yeah, I'm I'm happy to be here." What, 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 you know, at, least he, at least he didn't do like Andrew Whitworth and just sit up there and go, we're all going to die one day. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. Thanks for stopping by. The 2019 uh, Power Rankings <coughs> are out. BG, take a guess at who's tops on the list. No cheating. Tops. Number one I'm going go. into next year. Going into next year. Now, obviously, uh, I guess this is... You know, without you know, of course, the draft and free agency. Kansas you know, City the, Chiefs. No, the Chiefs are two. The the Super Bowl runner ups. Yeah, they've got the L.A. Rams at number one. Now this is the one. You know, looking through the list, this is the one that jumps out at me. Like I don't see that. They are not going back, man. The Rams. They went all in on this year. Going out. You've got golf on his rookie deal, but you went out. And you, and got, you feel like a, Sue's used up. Too. Right. You got. You know. You went out and you brought in Sue to leave Marcus Peters. You bring these guys in because you're making a run now. And we talked about. It. Yeah. You, they, we talked about it on the show. Yeah. Your concern was that you had a lot of strong personalities, personalities in that yeah. locker room, and that didn't end up being a problem. No. But you're right. Those guys, every one of them, on the back end of their success. Every one of yeah. those guys. Uh, but you've got the Chiefs at two, the Saints at three, and the Patriots at four. So the final four from this year is who they say uh, will be the top four teams going into next year. Uh, the Chargers, Bears, Colts, Seahawks, and Ravens round out the, the top ten. That feels high for the Bears for right now. See, I, I think that I'm fine with the Bears. They I, could they could end up being that good. They certainly could. Top but. ten for the Baltimore Ravens. That. No, no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, no well, you know, way. I was really high that. on them at the beginning of the preseason. I thought they had a pretty good roster. Uh, yeah. But, no. They, 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 Steelers at 11. That also seems high. No, you know, Antonio Brown's that not also be seems there. High. No Le'Veon Bell. I'm going to scroll. The top NFC East team, they've got Philly at 12. And then followed by the Dallas Cowboys at 13. It makes the point that the Cowboys are the youngest team to make the playoffs. They've got cap room, uh, but most of that cap room is going to be 
used up, uh, you know, with the upcoming deals for Amari Cooper and Zeke Elliott and uh, decide what you want to do with DeMarcus Ware. And, of course, you know, I mean, maybe you guys did the right thing, but you got a really big question mark. you got a brand-new play caller. Not a lot of record to go on there. I mean, this guy was a backup quarterback, what, yeah, two I years ago? Yeah, I don't understand I, that move. Um, for some reason, Kelly Moore, for some reason, is the new Jason Garrett. Jerry Jones has, for whatever reason, fallen in love with Kellen Moore. And it appears that for the rest of our lives, Kellen Moore is going to be associated with the Dallas Cowboys in some capacity. Uh, I don't know just, what else to it, it It doesn't feel like a good spot for his – yeah, that that I, caught me off guard. Yeah, that that You want to make him your guard. quarterback coach? Okay. Yeah. I'm a coordinator. Call him plays. Of course, I don't know if that's better than the alternative because I think the alternative was going to be Jason Garrett. And we've seen how that goes, um, but again, and, you know, this mentions, of course, that uh, you know we we should be hopefully, knock on wood, uh, getting Travis Frederick back next year. Um, Jason Garrett not getting a contract extension. They're going to make him coach this uh, coach this thing out. That not also the, surprised me. Not the first time. I was a little surprised at that too, uh, but not the first time Jerry's done that. Um, so we'll see. I, you know, I I expect the Cowboys hopefully to take a big step forward. So we'll see. Uh, let's see. Scrolling down, we got the Browns at fifteen, the Packers at seven or sixteen. Excuse me. Uh, seems low for Aaron Rodgers. Still scrolling, and here I think comes the, the 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 kind of common belief right now, though, is that the Packers are right at being done. I, I mean, I, I'm not saying I necessarily agree with it. Yeah, but. You know, a lot, a lot of the pieces of, around him have fallen apart. That we've talked about it. That organization has failed Aaron Rodgers. They have failed Aaron Rodgers much the same way that the Cowboys failed Tony Romo right. all those years. It's like I, I've said for years. Um, well, I haven't said it for years. I've said it for about one year. But like I, people always talk about, man, if the Redskins could just have at seven an years, elite. doggy years. If we we're dogs, you would have been said. You would have said it for the past seven years. Woof. Um, and people are like, I wonder what the Redskins would look like if they had an elite quarterback. I'm like, they'd look like Green Bay. They would look like a team with a really good quarterback who has absolutely nothing to show for it. I mean, they did yeah. one. They, they won one. Yeah. They won one. They got okay. one. Yeah. They got them one. But they haven't been back. They haven't even lost a Super Bowl. I mean, it still blows. Aaron Rodgers has played should, in one Super should Bowl. Should have gone back again if not for that uh, NFC title game up in Seattle a couple years ago. Like, the game was won. And yeah. Anyway, yeah. scroll down to 19 on the power rankings. In come the Carolina Panthers. Uh, they mentioned one name in their write-up for the Panthers, Cam Newton, and it talks about his shoulder surgery. Uh, Cam got it done a little earlier this time than the last time, but uh, well, I, I, I don't know, man. The Panthers, that's, that's, that's the team they have created, correct? I mean, it is all Cam Newton. Like, that's it. If he's not healthy, then 19 is way too high. And if he is healthy, they probably need to be up closer to thirteen or fourteen. But okay, a, but a, we don't know. A, we don't know. Clearly, he's not getting any younger. And no, he's, he's not he's, going to take any fewer hits. He's knocking on the door to thirty now. Uh, but a, a clearly unhealthy Cam Newton, and they still got the seven and nine. So there is some talent on. Well, that that's team. the good news for the Panthers uh, is they're virtually a, 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 they're virtually assured of a nine win season because they had a losing season this year. And that's what they do. So nine or ten wins, you chalk that up. I mean, it doesn't mean that they're any better doing it, but it's somehow just, it's just they're going to go happen. ten and six. I mean, you right, so we're write at, that down now. All right, so we're at nineteen with the Panthers, right? We're going to scroll. Oh boy, and we're going to keep scrolling past the Giants, past the Giants, and keep scrolling. You got Tampa Bay coming in at twenty-four, the Jaguars at twenty-six, and squashed in between the mighty Bucks and the mighty Jaguars come the Redskins. It mentions. Oh, the uh, you know the Redskins should be better. The health, they're going to be healthier. And then it says, wait, we said that last year, and they still had 26 players on injured reserve. I mean, so, I mean, I'm assuming the implication, and first of all, I, I think you could make the argument, and I'm not being funny right now, that we're the worst team in the NFL right now. Ah, oh, man, ain't no way. Oh, but you're cool with 25, so you're, we're, 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 we're yeah, but, arguing over seven spots. Yeah, but there's a long way down to the bottom. From 25, okay. 25 to 32 My is a point, long way. My point, though, is that we have no quarterback. I, I think you've already seen 
that there's been some leaks already that Alex Smith is not going to play next year. Well, I said that when it happened. Well, and and now Bruce, you know, Bruce Allen comes out and says that's absurd. Well, Bruce Allen is absurd. Okay, I think there's a good chance. I said it when it happened. No, I think he he never plays again. I I think, and and I think whatever his odds are, he's not going to play for the Washington Redskins. Um, We have we have no quarterback. It's not going to surprise me if we take Drew Locke. I mean, like, I, I think it's that kind of draft class. Somebody's got to take a snap next year. I, I don't I don't know what we're going to do. You don't want um, Josh Johnson or Mark Sanchez? I, I was actually – You can have Kellen Moore. He's probably still got a few throws left in that noodle <laughs> arm of his. He, and he knows all the Cowboys' <laughs> secrets. Um I'll tell you, I, I, I'm I about as disillusioned right now as a Redskins fan as I've been as a Redskins fan. Like, when the, the interview that Bruce Allen gave down at the Senior Bowl was the most disconnected from the fan base, arrogant, mm. smarmy. And, and you know, yeah. I, I guess you saw our owner bought a $270 million dollar yacht. And I'm thinking... But he wants tax money to build a stadium. Yeah. I don't... Right. I don't think... Uh, and I think this is true of a lot of NFL teams, but it's the first... I've always thought we were incompetent as a front office, mm-hmm. but I'm starting to really believe that it's worse than that. I don't believe these Do guys... You, you think there's people in the organization actively working to destroy the Redskins? I, no, I'm not going to go that far. But I will say that I don't think... Daniel Snyder cares whether the Redskins win. No, as long as those checks keep cashing. Man. But I think on the, I think they're on the, the the cusp of that ticket situation changing. I, it's I, a fan base that's I, had enough. I've seen uh, yeah, I've seen several fans through social media say that exact same thing that they are they're done. They're not buying the tickets. They're not going. They talk about how by the end of the season, uh, you know, the attendance at the games was vastly different. And it's like that everywhere, but they say it was vastly different from who actually but, came to what they say showed the up. the Redskins are not one of those franchises where that typically happened back in the day. No, they're, they're not. And, but, and so, you know... Listen, as a fan, the I've, I've always said, as a fan, the only way you can affect change is to just quit showing up. Yeah. You know, and I get that people don't want to give up their... You know, I've had... My family's had season tickets for 60 years. Yeah. You know, I have to buy the tickets, and if you buy the tickets, it doesn't matter. But you know, at, at the end of the day, that's the only voice you have. You I can't don't. pick up the phone and call Dan Snyder or anybody right. else. Uh, you know, so the only way you can, like I said, the only way that you really have to make your voice heard is to quit giving them your money. And 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 you know, I think you might recall early in the season, you know, the Redskins were in first place through what about week six or seven. Seems like it's longer than that. And you were higher on them than me, and I and I sort of talked to you, man. I said, "Look, I, nobody saw." Me. There are some really serious problems still in this franchise, not just in the talent. And I was starting to already see, you know, swearing or going off in the locker room about some of the stuff at practice. And I mean, I don't know what happened to DJ in Washington, yeah. and he's been in Arizona for a month now, and he still can't stop. Yeah. Uh, he, he had an article came out last week said as long as Jay Gruden is the coach of this team, they will never be successful. Now, I personally think he needs to just move on. Well, this no isn't even your team anymore. Dead, you're, you're it just makes you look petty. But yeah. as a Redskins fan, he's telling me what I've been thinking. Yeah. You know? Um, and so, yeah, uh, emotionally speaking, I'm about as uninvested in this team right now as, as I think I can get. They, they, they make the point here on the uh, on the list, they make the point that your two tackles, William and Moses, for the first time in a couple of years, they're going to come into next season healthy. Uh, and, you know, again, same thing we talked about before the season. You've got some young guys on that defense. But, I mean, Morgan Moses uh, missed, what, 13 games this year. Yeah. Okay, I'm happy he's healthy. Happy he's Is healthy. Is he going to stay that way? Yeah, well. Is anybody going to stay that way? That, right. Uh, but going into the season, those guys are not going to come off surgeries. We've got some, you know, you got some young pieces on defense. Yeah. Tell Jaker to do his job. Turn that into something. Uh, free agents, uh, some potential off-season moves. We've got a list of the top fifty free agents from, from ProFootballFocus.com. 
Uh, the number one name on the list in the top 20 is littered with guys from the NFC East, but the number one name on the list and the number two name on the list, both with ties to the Dallas Cowboys. Number one, Demarcus Lawrence. Uh, the Cowboys, it mentions how they put him on a prove-it deal, and he, you know, he handled his business, so I expect Lawrence to get his money this offseason from Dallas. What were his sack totals this year? Do we know? I don't have him. I mean, it was exactly. down, wasn't it? it was, well, it was probably down. My guess would he be didn't have was, twelve in one game to no. have them. So uh, my, my, my guess would be that it's a little down from the year before, but no, he 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 earned his money. He, he had, had a good, he, he had a good year. Course. Time time to pay that man. Number two on the list, Earl Thomas. I, we've been talking about, we've been Earl talking Thomas about and the this Cowboys since before forever. Earl Thomas was born. This feels to me like the whole. This is starting this has to feel. To be it, though. Well, this is starting to feel to me like the whole Adrian Peterson deal. Like for years, it was Adrian Peterson wants to be a Cowboy. He wants to go to the Cowboys. And by the time, it, by the time we ever really got halfway into being able to acquire him, he was like thirty years old, and we were getting ready to draft Ezekiel Elliott, and it never happened. Right. I'm starting to kind of feel like this with Earl Thomas. Uh, especially when you look down this list and the top 20 is loaded with defensive guys. Uh, Clowney comes in at six. Uh, but again, I got, would love to see him get off that squad, but I, I think they resigned. I, I think they resigned. Like I said, a lot of safeties. Uh, so like I, said, I don't think the Earl Thomas thing is going to. You know, Clowney's kind of quietly put together two pretty good seasons back to back now. Mm-hmm. Hasn't had a lot of health issues. I still don't like the way they use him. They, they kill his stats is what they do. He impacts the game, but the way they use him, it often doesn't show up on paper. Yeah. He doesn't get opportunities for sacks the way you'd like for him to. But, yeah, yeah J.D.'s he's turned into a pretty, 11, pretty good football player. 11 through 20, you've got the, the Panthers tackle, Daryl Williams. I expect that he'll be back. And the first Redskin pops up at number twenty. Ha ha, Clinton Dix. Well, I thought that was. I thought that I was, was about a, to say, is he is he a Redskin? I, I, I thought that was a great ad. At uh, the time, it seemed to shore up some things, but like I said, it, it, you know, he immediately started having issues. Yeah. Um, and and now we know that the, you know the whole basically the whole locker room was at war with itself. Wow. That's the kind of stuff that you put on the head coach, man. You just do. The next Redskin comes in at 29, Preston Smith. Yeah. Defensive end. Think he'll be back next year? <clears throat> I would be surprised. I would be surprised. Right. Um, I, I think that we, we haven't held on to defensive ends uh, or linebackers very successfully at all. Um you know, and, and Smith, another one of those guys. Now, this year, everybody was healthy. On I mean, defense was not where the injuries occurred. Mm. Uh, I believe he missed a lot of games last season. Um, but, you know. I, all right, here you go. Number 31 on the list. This is the name I'm going to give you. Go get this man, all right? You ready? Teddy Bridgewater. Go get Teddy Bridgewater. I was thinking that this morning on go the way to work. Go get Teddy Bridgewater. Seems man. like a no-brainer. I, you know, I, he seems I get, like the perfect fit for he, the Redskins he, he, right now. Yeah, of course he had the gruesome injury in practice. But he, you're not going to have to pay him anything. No, he basically hasn't played in three years. He gets in uh, what week 17 this year. Whenever they try to rest some starters in down in New Orleans, yeah, not great. But again, guy, he played football in like three years, man. Uh, Bridgewater is going to be on the hook for a new team. Washington desperately needs a quarterback. If you guys, there miss, is no downside to no, going to yeah, sign yeah, Teddy yeah, Bridgewater. If you guys pass on the Teddy Bridgewater, I, I, you know, then I good luck with Ryan Fitzpatrick or Mark Sanchez or whoever else you bring in. Uh, Forty-five on the list. This is an interesting one for Cowboy fans, uh, given the uh, recent tweets that were unleashed. Cole Beasley. Uh, one of the best slot men in so the, I think it, the Cowboys need to bring him back I, if they can. I, I don't believe he'll be back, man. Uh, you saw his tweets, right? He, he came. I out, did not. He came out uh, shortly after the season and tweeted out basically something to the effect of uh, the front office controls who gets the football. So that's it, not a good sign. Beasley throwing yeah. Beasley throwing down the gauntlet uh, for a guy in the slot. Uh, he, it says Cole Beasley's got 14 drop passes his entire career. Wow. Like, I remember having Terrell Owens, and as great as he was, like the knock on T.O. was always that he dropped, he would drop a ball in a minute. 
Cole Beasley's dropped 14 his whole career. Seventh most yards from the slot of any wide out last year. Uh, Cole Beasley is going to be a steal for someone. Which how brings, you, how, how you like Cole Beasley to the Patriots? Oh, Can you hey, see that? He's going to walk right in. He looks yeah. But I this is who. Uh, and by that we mean he's small and white. That's right. that's that's that seems to be something Belichick really likes. Who else in the box needs a wide receiver? The Carolina Panthers. Well, go out and sign Cole Beasley, Carolina Panthers. Yeah, no, you I can wanna, see. You, I can see him in that uniform. Too. You, you know, I, I think I've seen where basically we we've come to the agreement. Devin Funches is not coming back next year. I think that's I've seen that out there. He's going to be gone. You know, you've got a couple. This time uh, last year, he was going to be their number one wide receiver. All right, well, if you if you we you, tried to tell you. Say, if you bought that, then I've got some beachfront property in Lincoln, we Nebraska. I'd be happy to, to rent you. For I vacation. did think. Well, I thought he would see the writing on the wall and and become a productive number two wide receiver. But apparently, that's not good enough for him. Mm, no. He's going to have to go somewhere else and fail. But uh, you know, the Panthers have got some young receivers. Jarius Wright, uh, when given some opportunities, uh, he he made some plays. I will say, I don't that think you've the got the more. Cole Beasley type guy in McCaffrey now. I mean, I I think. Well, McCaffrey's like the Swiss Army knife. Yeah, he is. He's but, a Swiss Army knife. But you, you, I know they drafted DJ Moore. Were you overly impressed with DJ Moore this past year? I mean, I I wasn't. I think he, now, sh- he showed flashes. He, sh- he, he showed, showed flashes, flashes but, but he also didn't have a healthy quarterback at the time in his career, in his season when he should have been coming on. Yeah. Cam was falling apart. Yeah. No, so it's difficult to if, say if Cam gets his shoulder right. I think DJ Moore. Boy, that's a big if, man. It, that's a big if. But if if he gets his shoulder right, I think DJ Moore, uh, you know, is going to be your downfield guy. You want a man underneath, a sure-handed man underneath, and you want to ease some of the burden off Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. This is your guy, Carolina you Panthers. Though, this is your guy. Go sign Cole don't Beasley. Don't you feel, though, to some degree, like the the Cam issue is so big in Charlotte mm. that the, everything else we can talk about just feels pointless because we don't know if he's going to be if okay. His, if his shoulder is, you know, spaghetti noodles, then none of this matters. None of it them, matters, man. and that's what none I'm saying. None of this and matters for them. Anyway, this, so that's it. The uh, <clears throat> NFL season, which is why I don't want to talk about the Redskins. Because we don't have a quarterback. Well, you're going to go out and sign Teddy Bridgewater. It's going to be okay, man. It could it's happen. It's going to be okay. But, but I mean, and if not, what do you honestly think that that's going to happen, though? What? They're not going to get him. It makes too much sense. Well, I, they, they just I, I say this. It seems like now when you look across the league, and we, you know, we've had this discussion a hundred times, if you go back across the league, I don't know, ten years ago, you could probably pick out a dozen teams that were in dire need of a quarterback. And if they don't have one, they're – but now you look across the league, and uh, okay, most teams have somebody. Most teams have a a guy that they have either drafted, uh, a guy that they've signed, somebody that's young, or you've got somebody like Breeze or Brady that's been there for a hundred years. There aren't that many teams in search of a quarterback. Teddy Bridgewater, want you know, if he's looking for a starting a starting quarterback position. Yeah, the the draft's not loaded with quarterbacks. He sees wide open. It's baby. wide open, man. It's wide open. Uh, but like I said, the the uh, the NFL season is now in the books. The Patriots dynasty continues. No surprise, no surprise. Uh, NFL draft will be coming up. Football is not over, BG. Football is not over. This weekend, the what is it? The Alliance for American Football starts. We've got a few minutes uh, before our. Steve Producer Spurrier, wraps us the up. head coach in uh, Orlando. Here we go. Is this thing is it catching your interest at all? I think the the uh, the way the league is set up, you know, they don't uh, have the individually owned teams. Basically, Bill Polian runs everything. He runs every team. When did the USFL start their season originally? I know it was a spring sport, I don't but, know. It was but a spring see, it feels too soon. I need a breather. Like I, I, yeah. I was with you when you tweeted that. I'm, I'm, I'm done with football for right now. I'm I, good. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of ready for football to be over. With, I'm good. Man. I'm good with with basketball, and I'm really excited about. I'm always excited about baseball starting up because that means spring is here. Yeah, but and it, summer's coming. It, it, but I, I don't. I'm good with football sitting out for a while. Right, I'm okay with it. This this AAL is, is that AAF? Uh, no kickoffs. There's not going to be any kickoffs. They're going to start the drive on the 25. Well, I mean, there's no onside kick. Isn't that what the NFL's doing? They're just kicking the ball and then starting it. No onside kicks. If you want an onside, then you're going to go out to the 35 yard line and have a fourth and ten. 
no extra points. So basically, no kicking at all. Right. Everything's going to be a conversion. Well, and you know, if you think about it, the NFL right now is having a hard time keeping itself populated with kickers. Mm-hmm. That makes sense to me. That's smart on their part because they would have ended up with some putrid kicking. Oh, gosh. Uh, ten weeks starting this Sunday, Steve Spurrier's Orlando Apollos going to host the Atlanta Legends. And some of these names, you're, you're going to recognize some of these names on some of these teams, man. Uh, you know, you got Trevor Knight out in Arizona from Oklahoma. I think he's the one that beat Alabama a few years ago. Aaron Murray is playing for the Atlanta team. Uh, Denard Robinson, uh, I guess he's finally got his head and helmet situation straightened out. <laughs> uh, he's on that team. Is it Trent Richardson is yeah, in this league? Yeah. Let's see. We we'll find there's some Gamecocks here. Mike Singletary is the coach of one of the teams. Uh, of course, Spurrier. Uh, let's see. I just saw it down here. Uh, I think uh, what was a, what was the quarterback you guys had a few years? Uh, tight end, Wesley something. Oh, Wesley Saunders. Wesley Saunders. Uh, he he's he's playing on one of these teams from Moose, Raleigh. Moose Johnson is a GM of the San Antonio Commanders. Uh, I'm going to take a peek, man. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I will. I, I, I'm going to take a peek. Yeah. I like the ten weeks. I like that. I like a good round number. Now, what do you think? Does that ten weeks? Does that get you done before the NFL draft? I would think so, right? NFL drafts usually in May, yeah. so no, should, say, end of April, beginning of May. So you should this should be wrapped up before the um, draft. The question is, what do you think Spurrier's record will be after Week Five when he quits? Well, if we're going to say he's going to quit in Week Five, then well, I mean, it would have to be does. it would have to be two and three. I, I agree, two and three, two and three, two and three. Steve. Yeah, I, I, I want to take a peek at the a, AAF. I think it's fascinating that Bill Polian just runs the thing though. Like Bill he Poland, just, Bill, he, 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 that he, actually gives you some confidence that it might actually work because Bill Polian shows up on basically everybody's short list as one of the best football guys there is. Oh, no, I ha- I, I'm going to make a prediction. I think this league is going to stick, man. I think this thing is going to stick. Well, because let, let's be honest. We've talked about this. People have a football problem. They, they, they're going to if, – if they are – if Polian is running this thing basically and he's the one – you know, assigning the talent, new talent when it comes right. in and breaking it off into the teams. If they can do all of this and be done before the NFL draft, do they start getting into uh, you know, do they start getting into high school kids? Is this a, is this another yeah? Is this another well, avenue well, for for the, the top NBA high school is looking kids? at it? So why shouldn't football? But no, I, I, th- I think this thing is gonna this thing is gonna I think it's gonna stay. They, if they if they stick to the ten weeks, well, everybody tells they're you they're going to go through the play. That the USFL be done the draft. was doing fine until some of the owners decided to go head to head with the NFL in the fall. Like, what did they think was going to happen? It was doing fine in the spring. Well, they got some guys to come there instead oh, yeah. of going to the NFL, and yeah. they thought, okay, well, we're going to take our shot, and it didn't work. You could argue that the. The disillusion of the NFL or the USFL is what created the 90s Cowboys. It was the Herschel Walker trade mm. that made that whole thing possible. Jerry and uh, Jerry and Jimmy's genius. Say that three times fast. Jerry and Jimmy's no, genius. I don't really Jerry do and it. Jimmy's genius. Jerry and Jimmy's genius. All right. Well, That's it, guys. Uh, got some announcements that may be coming up, so stay tuned. Uh, maybe going back uh, with a live version of the Border War podcast. We will uh, definitely keep you updated. So in the meantime, uh, follow us on Twitter at the Border War. Uh, you can follow us on uh, Facebook as well. Uh, listen, we're trying to give you a uh, another choice in your afternoon drive time sports talk local Lord knows people radio. Out here need one. Uh, so share our post. Get us uh, get us out there. Uh, make your friends listen to the show. I don't have anything else to say to you. I like the new guy over in neighboring county. He's not bad in the afternoon. Oh, I meant to tell you, did you see what he did? I did I not. thought about you. Like Super Bowl Sunday, I guess I, I I missed it on the air, but I guess that he had like put out some sort of, uh, you know, invite me to your party and I'll come kind of thing. <laughs> and he did. That's amazing. Like he, he got, you know, I, guess, I guess people invited him, so he like was, you know, 
Facebook living or tweeting live or whatever, like video that of him is showing it. But really cool. I, I thought about that. Uh, oh, I man. thought about no, that. No, I know what you're going to say. That party we tried to get together. At that your was place. not a party we tried to get together. That was a it party. Did. We had flyers and everything. Man, you it created just didn't. fake flyers for a party at my house it with just people I hated. It just didn't take off. I thought about you. I was like, man, that, gosh, I wish that would have happened. That would have been amazing. People would have died. Tiny hands. I would be in jail. Tiny hands showing up at BG's house to watch some Sunday ticket. 